in the far north of Mongolia, there is a huge and uncharted icy land where a surprising population of nomads live, the Tsartan. They are known as the reindeer people. There are only 200 of them, and today their traditional lifestyle is disappearing. Finding them involves a long expedition. It starts in this old Russian off-road van from the 60s. It will take me seven days of traveling. I will go up from Ulaanbaatar, the capital, to the far north of the country, to the region of Lake Kovskol, just beside the border with Russia. 1,000 kilometers of roads and tracks, often in desert areas. Where's the bridge? The bridge? You're not on the right track. You have to go in that direction. Go that way. In the north, you have to cross frozen rivers. Three days in a van to get where there is no longer a road nor a path. We delve into the taiga, where only a few Mongolian riders, like my guide, still manage to find their way around. I had already made this trip four years ago. I had met the Tsartan on my first trip to Mongolia. I'd met a community of nomads, worried at seeing their traditions disappearing. I wanted to come back to film them before their way of life changed. The Tsartan told me to meet them here, in the middle of nowhere. Alongside me, a Mongolian translator able to understand the Tsartan language, Tuvan a rare language, is still spoken by some communities in Siberia. After several hours of waiting, two figures appear. They come riding on reindeer, the only animal able to cross the icy paths of this mountainous region in the middle of winter. Look at those two reindeer, they're exhausted. I don't know what to do. They can't travel the road ahead of them. They're too tired, they won't be able. We will have to spend the night here. It is minus 10 degrees. The nomads improvise a shelter with just a canvas sheet, under which we will all sleep, tightly packed together. It looks like the snow is stopped. Mm. Yes, it's snowing less. It's good to let the reindeer rest. I'm going to add more wood onto the fire. Mm. 
The camp is a day's walk away. I'm struck once again by the feeling of total isolation, which had made such an impact on me during my first trip. I find the family I befriended four years ago. Magsa, the father, is still dressed in his traditional blue tunic. Not very comfortable in front of my camera. His wife, Urchi, and their youngest son. Get out of the way! Stay over there! Dad, I managed to catch it! Sugara, nine years old. I will live with them for a month. It's the end of autumn, a pivotal period which precedes the great winter seasonal migration. These nomads regularly change their camp, always looking for food for their reindeer. We're always looking for lichen. We follow the reindeer. Yes, we follow them. That's why we live in the taiga. I have a hundred reindeer. You ought to sleep now. He said that you can sleep. I can't sleep anymore now. Because of me? Oh, sorry. He was filming you. <laughs> I didn't know. Come on, move. The Tsartan's whole life revolves around their reindeer. In the camp, the animals roam around between the tents. And sometimes this cohabitation is a bit turbulent. Why did you undo it? Even attached, it's dangerous. This morning, one of the males is in heat and is particularly aggressive. If they fight one another, it will escalate. Run, run quickly! <laughs> <laughs> Sugura, come! The Tsatan live in one of the coldest and most inhospitable regions of Mongolia. But to be able to follow their herd, they live in simple canvas teepees, which are easy to transport. Don't spill it on your feet, it's hot. I'll put it here afterwards. <laughs> but despite the lack of comfort, I've never heard them complain. I'm a very lucky man. I live among such beautiful nature, with fresh air, reindeer. I'm so happy with my life. Here in the Taiga, we do what we want to. We're free. The Tsatan always surprise me. They feel privileged. 
neither do the extreme temperatures nor their isolation seem to affect them. What is the hardest thing in your life? In summer, the reindeer sometimes want to come inside the teepee. That's the hardest thing. We don't want a different life. Staying here is enough for us. The Tsatan are used to gathering in small family groupings. Next to Magsar's teepee is his cousin Huluk. He lives there with his wife Hulan and their son Ganar. I'm 25 years old and my wife is 26. We met in Ulaanbaatar. We worked together there. We wanted to live there, but it was too difficult. That's why we chose to live here. That was two years ago. I was born here. This is my mother's land, my family's land. I was free to live elsewhere, but I had to come back here. I could never live anywhere else. Hulan, Huluk's wife, is not Tsatan. She had never experienced nomad life before. And of course, she had never lived in such a hostile environment. I discovered a new world, and that's what I liked. Outsiders think it's hard to live here. They tell me, you live in such a hard and cold and snowy region. I tell them, it's so beautiful, so beautiful that I never found it hard. At first, I had to get used to the climate and to these temperatures. Now it's okay. I'm totally acclimatized to it. I'm so proud of my wife. She's so strong. She could live anywhere, even on this difficult land. She loves me and she can follow me anywhere. At the age of one and a half, Gana is a real little tatan. Whilst temperatures fall well below zero degrees, he walks around half naked. When we were children, our mothers dressed us like this, without anything else. And as an adult, you don't need warmer clothes. That's why we dress Gana like this. 
The first year was easy. He spent his time sleeping and eating. Now it's more complicated. He walks and he always wants to go outside. And with the cold, it's difficult to always protect him. You're so cute. Come here so I can kiss your little cheeks. My son is already posing. Stop, he's not a star. Oh, you saw the camera. He's coming close. He's curious. He isn't used to you. He'd like to come closer, but he doesn't dare. <laughs> At the camp, little by little, I lose the notion of time. Life trickles by, simple and repetitive. Only the chores of wood gathering and reindeer milking give rhythm to the day. The reindeer milk, which they consume in large quantities, is stored on these wooden trestles that function as a freezer. Be careful, it'll break. Of course not. Yes, it can break. Your son already broke one, don't you remember? What? The frozen milk. When it's frozen, it doesn't break. I can break. I'm fragile. You're funny. You throw fragile things and never solid ones. I'm telling you that frozen milk doesn't break. Don't worry. Even if it breaks, it doesn't spill. If we had a meat grinder, we'd already have finished cutting the meat. You scare me. Why? Your hair is like a hedgehog. I'll do my hair again then. You're beautiful. He says you're beautiful. I look like a hedgehog. I have now been here for two weeks. The two families are used to my camera and let me film their daily lives and intimacy. And they even make fun of it. Do you look over there? No. Show the camera your beautiful earrings. No. Huluk thinks I'm filming his wife a little too much. But I only find this out once I get back to France and have their conversations translated. Under the pretext of filming, he's checking out my wife. <laughs> I can't tell him, he would take it badly. If I tell him to stop, do you think he'd be disappointed? <laughs> I filmed their daily lives, which seem to have gone almost completely unchanged for centuries. Hey, what are you doing? I'm taking it for myself. <laughs> Yet, in recent years, the modern world has been catching up with them. The Mongolian government requires all children in the country to attend school from the age of six. Now, during the winter, Satan families have to split up. Children and their mothers go to the only village in the region where the school is located, whilst the men stay alone in the taiga with the reindeer. It depends on the age of the child. If the children are under six years old, 
The family can stay together in the taiga during the winter. But when the child has to go to school, they cannot be left alone in the village. That is why their mothers stay there with them. Now, our children have to go to school from the age of six. So we can't stay in the taiga. We have to go to the village because we worry about them. If you don't send your child to school, no one will know, not even the state. We don't want that. If the child does not go to school, what will become of him? He will not be able to read, count or even write his first name. He will not be able to have a good life. And you, Sugara, would you rather stay here with your family or go to school? Stay here. With the family. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Do you like school? Do you like school? It's not interesting. It's not interesting. <laughs> boring. Do you know any Do you know of any families who refuse to send their children to school because they don't want to be separated? No, all the children go to school. Mm. We're not savages. <laughs> In front of me, Magsa and Urchi don't want to seem like bad parents. But I know that they are torn between continuing the tradition or offering their child a different future. In reality, they allow themselves some liberties. The school year started two months ago, but they decided to keep Sugara with them until the beginning of winter. This male is the leader of all our reindeer. We made a stock of wood in the forest. I'm going with him. You stay here. But I want to go. When I said to Sugara that I wanted to interview him, he immediately put on his best deal, the traditional nomad dress. My name is Sugura, and I'm nine years old. I'm a Sartan. What I like is looking for the reindeer in the forest. School is hard. I'm sad. I must leave my dad. It's so great living here. With my family and the reindeer. I love you, little brother. I love you, big brother. For Ganar, the issue of school hasn't yet arisen. But Huluk and Hulan, his parents, don't seem to agree with this new law. When the time comes, I'll decide. I can't say for the moment. It's our choice. If we want to split up, we'll do so. If not, we'll stay here in the taiga together. It will be very difficult. I can't imagine the separation. It's like you, here, without your wife and children. <laughs> In recent days, the snow has started to fall heavily on the taiga. Winter is setting in. The lichen begin to run out. We will have to leave the camp. 
The village where the school is located is a three-day walk away. And soon, the mountains will be impassable. Magsa thinks that it would be safer to make the journey with other Tsartans. He decides to visit another family who lives half a day away by reindeer from their camp. Six adults and six children live here. In the taiga, visits are rare. The families improvise a celebratory meal. When it snows, the reindeer gain weight. It's true. You're right. Reindeer are happy when it snows a lot. You're too cute. What is he eating? It's pasta. <laughs> We should bring several families together and celebrate. <laughs> Look, you can slide all the way down. We can remove the branches to slide better. <laughs> Shugra, shall we try to slide here? Yes. Get out of the way. I can slide faster. Inside the teepees, the adults are already nostalgic. The time to split up is coming. Now, we have to live separately for several months. The weather is unfavorable. The Tsartan don't know when to leave. It will clear up at some point. The way it's going, it's not likely to improve until next year. <laughs> you laugh, but what will we do? When it snows, it's difficult. It complicates the situation. It will get very slippery. Finally, without my really understanding why, the two families will not manage to agree on a departure date. Magsa and his family return to their camp. Two days later, the sky is clear. It's not easy. The luggage is well loaded this way. Attach it here, that's good. Huluk and Hulan leave first. I see their belongings spread out in a jumble on the ground. Their entire possessions fit onto the backs of their reindeer. Watch your head! Goodbye, my teepee. Goodbye to the place where I grew up. Goodbye to the place where I was born. Goodbye to the water I drink every day. That's what we say every time we leave a camp. Attach him well. We can't have him falling off on the journey.
With that, he won't be cold. The clan separates. They won't see one another again until next summer. Safe travels, everyone. You too. Safe travels. Their son is still young. Huluk and Hulan have no constraints. They go deep into the taiga to set up their winter camp. They are free, as the Tsatan have always been. Magsa doesn't dismantle his tipi. He will accompany Urchi and Shugara to the village where their other children already live. Then he will come back here to round up his reindeer and take them further north. The journey will take several days. Give me the binoculars, I want to see. I sense that Magsar is worried. The snow that has fallen in recent days masks the crevices. But the family doesn't have a choice. They have to cross four passes at an altitude of over 2,000 meters They walk between seven and ten hours a day. Sugara's endurance impresses me. At night, we sleep under the stars on reindeer skins, wrapped in simple blankets. The parents worry about Sugara. Tomorrow morning, we'll have to make him soles, otherwise he will be cold. His socks are torn and his shoes are not suitable. I'm young, I'm not cold. Tomorrow, we will make you soles. Magsar is relieved. Crossing the passes was the most dangerous part of the expedition. The reindeer did well. Yes, it was dangerous. When they crossed it, I wondered if they were going to slip. They risked breaking their legs and falling to the bottom of the cliff. At last, after walking for three days, we arrive at our destination. In the plain, a huge frozen lake. This is where we find Sagan Nur the only village in this uninhabited region. One thousand people live here. Half of them are nomads who have decided to settle down. A few kilometers from the village, Magsar built a log cabin two years ago to shelter his family during the school year. 
The couple reunites with their three other children, a girl and two boys. The two eldest have completed their studies, but they stay in the village to take care of their 13-year-old sister, who has been back in school since September. Put the dumplings in the water to cook. Where do I put the offal pot? Should I put it outside? No, leave it there, otherwise it will spill. Magsar takes advantage of returning to the village to try to better insulate the walls. Inside the hut, for the first time, I discover signs of the modern world that is inexorably catching up with them. On the traditional wooden sideboard, a small television powered by solar panels. I wonder if they watch it, and especially, what does it tell them about our world? Like all Tsatan, Magsa and his family are animists and practice shamanic rituals. Every morning, I offer nature and spirits the first tea of the day. I throw it three times, in eight directions. For the sky, nature, mountains, spirits, everything around us. It's been three days since we arrived. But Sugara still doesn't go to school. And to my astonishment, his parents say nothing to him. I go to see this school that is shaking up the traditional Tsatan way of life. It welcomes nearly 500 students aged 6 to 18 years. A quarter of them are Tsatan. Please, miss. No, you have not calculated correctly. <laughs> you have to multiply, not divide. 30 teachers and professors teach here full time. The head teacher of the school is Satan herself. I feel she is very invested in her mission. For someone from Ulaanbaatar, it's hard to work here. But I was born here, in this region. I lived and worked in this village. And around 10 years ago, I moved to Ulaanbaatar. There, I worked as a teacher, pedagogical manager, and even academy secretary. Then, I decided to return to my place of birth, to bring my contribution. To develop this school, thanks to my experience. Today, almost all Satan children go to school, but some in a very irregular way. This is the case for Magsar's elder sons. Baska on the left went to school from 12 to 18 years old. Sumya on the right from 9 to 15 years old. I ask them about their future and about what they'd like to do later on in life. <laughs> I don't know. 
Ah, it's a dun like my father. I have no idea. I want to be a horse breeder. I would like to take care of horses in the summer and follow the reindeer in the winter. I love this area and keeping cattle. That's why I didn't go to university. Oh, I miss the reindeer too much. They're so beautiful. And especially so cute. The choice of the two boys does not delight the whole family. Yesterday, the children brought back milk. Which is richer, the reindeer or the cow? Reindeer, of course. Galia is 72 years old. She is the children's grandmother. She doesn't really understand them. They want to leave school to live like Satan? Yes. If they really choose this life, I think it's going to be hard for them. Sugara and Samya will grow up, and over time they're going to want to get married. But without knowing how to read or write, it will be complicated to find a wife. They will be forced to stay in the taiga. Later, they might regret it and blame us for it. And say, but why didn't you send us to school? Obviously, a child does not want to go to school. It's up to the parents to force them. Days go by, and Sugara stays home. I sense that Magsa is sad and nostalgic. He will soon leave his family and head off to the taiga alone with his reindeer. We have no choice. Reindeer need to eat lichen. Here, they have nothing to eat. Magsa doesn't really want to talk. I try to ask him about Sugara, who is still not going to school. It's his choice. Do you and you always let your children decide? Yes. And uh, are you scared for your children's future? I don't know. I hope they will have happy lives. The world is changing. And what do you think of today's world? It's going in the wrong direction. I wonder how the Tatan will manage to maintain this fragile balance between their tradition and this modernity that is gradually encroaching. I leave and promise to come back to see them. Three years later, I am back in Mongolia. Curious to know what has become of Magsar and his family. I head to the taiga in the heart of winter. In this freezing cold, 
The world of the Satan seems even more inaccessible to me, even more isolated. Huluk and Hulan still look so in love. Gana is four years old. He has a little sister. I show them the images which I filmed. <laughs> <laughs> Magsa, like every winter now, had to leave his family. I find him in the mountains, where he joined a group of breeders. <laughs> Sugara, his youngest son, stayed in the village. But Maxar tells me half-heartedly that he still doesn't go to school. Or very infrequently. <laughs> Sumya, the youngest son, is there. This is the first time he's accompanied his father since he left school. Together, they will carry out the great winter transhumans. They will take their herd of a hundred reindeer to the north of the country. The Tsartan delve into the depths of the taiga. as their ancestors have done for centuries. It's between minus 25 and minus 35 degrees. Three days on reindeer back, on a forced march. <laughs> Fatigue and cold sometimes cause the riders to fall. What's up? You have runny eyes. Can you see all right? My eyes are full of tears. I'm getting old. Mm, teary eyes is not good. It's a wind that's making me cry. Hey! There's a lot of stones. Oh, I almost fell. It's really not your day. The nomads only stop when they found an area that's rich in lichen. <laughs> On the camp, there's no more children's laughter or female voices. From now on, it's a man's universe. The breeders will now live separated from their families until spring. They will return to the village, each in turn, a few days a month, weather permitting. When I'm here, I think about my family who are in the village all the time. And when I go down there, I think of my reindeer. Magsar resigned himself to spending the winter isolated, far from his family. 
But he wonders how much longer his children will endure living like this. Lost in the heart of the taiga, at minus 40 degrees, under a simple teepee. Chinaxi.